Greetings, everybody, and happy Easter. It sounds great to say that. What a wonderful day it is. Normally, on a Sunday, we'd have a lot of announcements about the many things happening at the church. But today, there's only one announcement, and it is the announcement of all time. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us worship the Lord together. Rise up in early morning, sing of the risen Savior, sing tidings of salvation, revival your dreaming, in chimpolis, in chimpolis, penis on a tibus, in chimpolis, penis on a tibus, in chimpolis, in chimpolis, penis on a tibus, in chimpolis, Christ the Lord is risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Christ, Christ the, the Lord, Lord is risen. risen. The, the Lord, Lord has, has risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
life and power, in the beauty of this morning, we gather as your people, distanced from one another, yet drawn close and made one in your love. Wherever we are this day, we marvel in the empty tomb. We give thanks that in the resurrection of your Son, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life. Pour your Spirit upon us as we worship. Open our hearts that we might share the wondrous good news that our risen Lord is with us now in the midst of all the challenges of these days. May his promise to be with and remain with us encourage us and fill us with Easter hope. Incline your ear to us as we pray our Savior's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. First lesson this morning comes from the book of Psalms. It is Psalm 100 perfect song for Easter, a song of joy and a song of faithfulness and hope. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Everybody. I took off my robe to come out here to the garden where we usually have our Easter egg hunt. And I did that because, well, unfortunately we're not together to have our traditional Easter egg hunt, but this year we're going to have sort of a mini Easter egg hunt. And so let me pick up the last few eggs and then I'll take them over and then we'll look at some of what I got in my Easter egg basket here. All right, let's go over to the steps here and let's, um, let's look at what's in this basket. Hmm, sounds promising. Ah, jelly beans. Now, I don't particularly love jelly beans, so I'm thinking these will be for my wife, Lynn. She loves jelly beans. Here, I'll just put these here. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's actually... I don't really hear much in there. Let's see what is in here. A peep. Now, I also, I don't love peeps, but I can tell you my daughter Allison loves peeps, so this one's for Allison. Okay, let's try another one here. Ooh, this sounds promising too. A chocolate egg. Now, I can tell you for sure that I love chocolate and I love chocolate eggs. I think I'm going to eat this one, but I'll eat it later. Ah, another one. Another chocolate egg. I love chocolate, but you know what? In the spirit of Easter, maybe I should share this. I'll let Lynn and Allison decide who gets this chocolate egg. All right, let's do one more. I think let's look at this gold one. You don't see gold eggs very often. Let's see what's in here. It's empty. <laughs> no. 
Now, theoretically, I should be upset that there's nothing in here. But this reminds us of something that's so important. It reminds us of the fact that when the women went to the tomb on that first Easter morning 2,000 years ago, the tomb was empty. Yes, Easter egg hunts and Easter and candy are such an important, Easter candy are such an important part of Easter. But the most important part of Easter is what we need to remember, that he is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Our second lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It's Matthew's version of the Easter morning story. Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. And ran to tell the disciples Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There you will see me. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Easter Sunday, we ask that your presence be in our hearts as we hear and try to understand this story which is beyond comprehension. 
beyond comprehension in a good way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So my first job, my first job after graduating from college was in a school. I was a teacher, a school up in Boston. I taught some classes, different classes. I also taught, well, I was a coach in multiple sports, and I was also, I ran a dorm. And one of the most, the thing that stands out the most from those years, two years as a teacher, especially the first year, is that I had absolutely no control over the kids. I looked, it didn't help that I looked like I was about 12 years old, and the kids, they ran all over me. My classrooms were chaos, the sports fields or the basketball gym, not as under control as I wanted it to be. In the dorm, I remember one particular time, things were so crazy in my dorm, I don't know what I was trying to do, whether I was trying to get the kids to study or what it was, but they were just running around like crazy. I didn't know what to do. So I called my buddy Steve Sincata. Steve, can you come up? Steve was tough. I said, Steve, can you come up and lay down the law? And he did, and it worked. Thank you, Mr. Sincata, wherever you are. But there was one thing, well, I had one method, one tool that I was able to use that it didn't work perfectly, but it worked in a lot of circumstances to help get the kids' attention and to, well, have some semblance of control. Have you ever been on a school bus with about 50 screaming fifth graders, my soccer team, wherever we were going. I don't remember it, but I remember some of those bus rides, they were out of control, but I had a tool that helped. Let me show it to you. And those kids, they paid attention. Well, here we are on Easter Sunday. And 2,000 years ago, we have this gigantic school bus that we call the world. And on it, the kids are, the kids, all of us, were misbehaving and were going wild and were fighting with each other. It's chaos. And God blew the whistle and everybody paid attention. It changed the world. God blew that whistle and said, calm down, behave yourselves, don't fight so much anymore, it's going to be okay. That whistle came in the form of these words, he is risen and he's not here anymore, you'll find him in Galilee. Resurrection is God's way of getting our attention. Now, of course, God's methods are different than those of a panicky middle school teacher. That gigantic whistle, well, it started out kind of slowly and kind of quietly with the angel speaking to just two women, two women, in an empty tomb. But these women, and this is the good news, they could not contain their excitement and the word started to spread and the word eventually, the world eventually started to pay attention as people shared the word time and again, shared the excitement. And I like to think that today Today, maybe the world is paying the closest attention it has in an awfully long time. You see, in times of trouble, we tend to return to the basics. And what could be more basic than Christ the Lord is risen today? In this time of coronavirus, we feel, I know I do, and I think it seems obvious, we feel more helpless than any time I can remember in my life. 
And so it feels to me also that people are paying attention. And the Easter message is pitch perfect for this moment. The message is God has our backs. It will be okay. All because God took the worst that the world had to offer, death on a cross, and made something wonderful out of it, the promise of eternal life. The message of Easter is that we will get through this. The message of Easter is that, of course, God did not abandon us. The opposite is true. The message of Easter is that the opposite is true. God is with us whatever we're going through. The way Matthew tells the story, there's one thing that especially jumps off the page in that reading. Four times, whoops, four times, it jumps off the page. Fear. Both the angel at first talking to the women and then Jesus talking to the women, they each say the same thing to address the fears that they knew were in that tomb. To Mary Magdalene and to the other Mary, they say this about fear. They say something that we always need to hear, not just in times of coronavirus. They say, be not afraid. Be not afraid. And yet, if you're like I am, who among us isn't afraid? And I'm not just talking about coronavirus. I'm not going to give you a list, but my list is really long. So, we have a, a garage, of course, for our car, and it's a very narrow garage. And what that means is that parking our car can be pretty exciting. Especially because the car, the new car we got about a year ago, it has one of those alarms in it that if you're veering in the direction of practically anything, the alarm goes off and it's constantly going off. As we're, you know, one time I'm heading the wrong way, no, I've got to adjust. It's going all the time as I'm parking in that garage. And the funny thing is I almost never hit anything. But that doesn't stop it from going off. Well, I think that we sometimes live our lives kind of like that, with alarms, imagining alarms going off in our heads every 10 seconds. What if I mess this thing up? What if I don't win this piece of business? What if I, I, my kids, what if my kids don't do this or do that? What if what I'm afraid of happens to me, whatever that might be? What if, what if, what ifs? They can paralyze us with fear, fear of venturing out and of trying new things in life. And even trying and getting back to basic things. When Christ said to those women, be not afraid, the next thing he said, and the angel too, was get out there. In that case, he was saying, go back to Galilee. Tell the others, live life out in the world. But wait a minute. The alarm keeps going off time and again. <coughs> well, truth be told, there is always risk of danger in life. Risk that just comes with the territory of being a human being. Risk with, comes with the great gift of free will that God has given to the world. But the gift of Easter is about not being so scared. Not being so scared that we become paralyzed for fear of bad things. Of course, ultimately, death. But also, scared of living life. The story of Easter is about addressing, yes, fear of death, but just as much fear of life. Friends, this too shall pass. We will get through this coronavirus stuff, and when that happens, we'll get back to living life. We're not sure exactly how, but we will get back to it. 
And when we're in that new way of living, we want to live with post-resurrection excitement and post-resurrection confidence. We want to live the way Christ calls us to live in his life and in his ministries. A life of boldly sharing Christ's love and Christ's peace. Excitement in our lives. Imagine the excitement that his followers, starting with the two women, with the two Marys, how much they must have felt that day. They found renewed hope for their own lives, but also for the world. They realized that no, no, the world isn't just some cruel place where the good gets snuffed out, which is how it appeared on Good Friday. Do you know the story, you've probably seen it online, of a doctor in Minnesota named Dr. Janjua. And she was pulled over by a state trooper, uh, officer, an officer Schwartz, who was going to give her a ticket for speeding. When the officer realized or learned that she, or could see even, that she was a doctor and she was on her way to help others, during this coronavirus time. He went back to his car and he brought her most of his own stash of protective masks that he needed. Both of these, the doctor and the officer, have said beautifully moving things about the encounter they had. But one thing the doctor, Dr. Janjua, said stands out for me. She said, the veil, the veil of civilization may be thin, but not all that lies beneath is savage. We will be okay. This is a lot like what the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. also said. He said, the arc of the universe, it may be long, but it bends. It bends towards justice. That, that is the message of Easter. That good will prevail even though we don't always understand it. And therefore, we don't have to be so afraid. God actually is with us. And if God is with us, who or what could be against us? You know, it's easy to miss something that's in this reading. It's towards the end of the Easter reading. And it's something that gives us, I think, perspective on dealing with our fears. So as we go to the story, the reading, it tells us that as the two Marys are leaving the tomb, they had both great fear, but also great joy in their hearts. It is so important to see that when Jesus says, do not be afraid or fear not, that is not a command to banish fear any more than someone of my height could be commanded to be six foot two. No, this is instead recognition, the combination of having fear and, and, and joy in their hearts is recognition of the truth that fear is not the entire story. That our nagging fears can be superseded by joy. The joy of realizing that God loves us and God forgives us, and God is with us, and that God will help us through. Joy. The joy of realizing that with faith in God's power and God's love, we can handle our fears. Freeing us to live bold, more boldly as Christians, sharing the love that we've been given, and maybe Bending that arc, helping bend that arc of the universe back towards justice.
And so it turns out that when God created us, we were actually not created with these, these um, car alarms inside us that go off every five seconds. The reason we were created without those is because God has confidence that we can deal with life. That we can, don't always have to be so afraid when we walk with God, with Christ, holding hands. We just don't have to be so afraid. We don't have to be afraid of the wild things that can happen in life. Wild things like a, a busload full of fifth grade kids screaming at the top of their lungs. Even if we forget our whistles. Amen. <laughs> front of our beautiful sanctuary this morning and we're going through a, just another chapter in the long history of Plymouth Congregational Church and a chapter in our lives it's an unusual chapter but we're, res we're respecting the need to keep each other safe but when we look at the history of Plymouth founded in 1897 and this sanctuary built in 1917 123 years of practicing an Easter faith and fellowshipping together and then with those as our foundation going out into the world and trying to make a difference in the lives of our neighbors and beyond it has been throughout those 123 years that we are grateful for the support and the generosity of our many members and others that have helped Plymouth be as strong in all of our ministries as we've been. We invite you to give back as best you can.
Let us pray. God of glory, this is the first day of the week, the day you have made. May we rejoice and be glad in it. May it bring forth new life to our faith. Here we are, Lord. We join your disciples around the world, from our homes, our balconies, our backyards. In these strange and often distressing days, help us to receive the strange and wonderful news that your redeeming work is done and that Christ is risen indeed. Wherever we may be, in Christ we are one. And praying with one heart, we join with all creation to say, Alleluia. Shepherd of our souls, pilgrims on the way, help us to discover ways on what feels like a dangerous detour to love you with all our hearts, all our souls, and all our minds. Fill us with perseverance, wisdom, and hope that we might love and serve our neighbors near and far. When we are fearful, when confusion grips us, when we are doubtful, grieving, or carrying heavy burdens, grant us your assurance that we are never alone, that nothing in all creation can separate us from your steadfast love. And may that trust grant us stalwart spirits. Living Redeemer, you have promised to prepare a place for us. May all who suffer the sting of death feel the comfort and healing power of that promise. The empty place where you lay offers us hope that can enter the empty places in our souls. Many of us wear heavy yokes, facing tomorrow with fear and deep uncertainty. At this very moment, from pressure cookers of homes turned schools, offices, and sick rooms, some plead for patience and grace. From homes that were once filled with friends and visitors, others are before you right now with an insidious adversary, loneliness. Around the world, others are in the whirlpool of caring for the sick and keeping vital goods and services available. God of resurrection, hope, watch over them. Renew their strength, raise them up in body and spirit. May they know how much we honor and appreciate their sacrificial work. Lord, you know each of us by name. And into this church family, COVID has come. We pray for Carlos and his family as they grieve the death of his father and two cousins. We pray for his mother in the hospital. For Lee as she grieves the death of her cousin Diane. George and Carissa as they battle this disease right now. For John, Nancy and BJ as they begin to heal. Spirit of light and life, every day in countless ways the world asks us to deny you. Help us to dare to believe the women who sought you in the darkness. You search us in our darkness. You know our strengths and our struggles. And so in a quiet moment, open our hearts as completely as you opened the tomb. Prince of Peace, we are your beloved children. Created in your image, you call us to a life of possibility and grace. You have given us life, gifts of intelligence and creativity. Bless us with compassion and a sacred sense of purpose that we might use them to your honor, glory, and delight. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days. For Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Amen.
is open, the tomb is empty, and the colors are so beautiful. It's Easter, Easter Sunday, and we're in so many different places, but that's okay. Because wherever we are, we can trust that God is there with us. And so a benediction, trusting in God's presence. Go now with God. Be not tempted to stay only in the safety of known places. Be not tempted to go only in your own time. Choose to go with God. Elect not to go alone. Go in the faith that there's no valley so low, no wilderness so vast, no passage so crooked that God is not already there waiting to be with you. Amen and Happy Easter. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thank uh-huh.
Thank you.